The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn began in London in the magical year of 1888. Some of them have met up today in the Atlantis Bookshop to tell us more about this magical order. Deo duce come te ferro. Vestigia nulla restrosum. Demon et Deus inversus. Per ignum ad lucum. Sapienta, sapienti, dono data. Frater per Dorabo. We were originally based in London. The original manuscripts containing our rituals had an address for Germany and an adept who lived there. She was written to and her reply gave us her blessing for the foundation of our order. We were guided in our magical works by our secret chiefs. Now these secret chiefs I can tell you nothing about. I do not know their earthly names. I only know them by certain mottos. I have but very rarely seen them in the physical body. And on these rare occasions the rendezvous was made astrally by them. I believe them to be human beings living on this earth, but possessing terrible superhuman powers. We later moved to Paris with my wife and continued my magical work there. I met my future husband at the British Library. I was there researching Egyptology. He was always there, also researching, but he noticed me and introduced himself. I was immediately smitten. The vault was a room especially designed for the order of performing rituals or for meditating in and consecrating one's magical instruments. It was to be used only for these purposes. It was a very sacred room. One of the lessons a student learned was to astral travel using the tactile vision. To astral travel, one put oneself into a special state and meditates on one of the symbols. These are coloured symbols representing the elements. We have Teja, the red triangle. Vayu, which is a blue circle. Apples, a silver moon crescent. Prithivi, a yellow square. And a Kasha, the black egg. When astral travelling, one is also developing one's clairvoyant abilities. One can travel to the other worlds and encounter other beings, as well as loved ones who have passed over to the other side. I had already founded the Hermetic Society in Dublin before I joined the Golden Dawn. It was through Mathers that I began certain studies and experiences that were to convince me that images well up before the mind's eye from a deeper source than conscious or subconscious memory, because the magical order differs from a society for experiment and research, in that it is an actual being, an organic life holding within itself the highest life of its members. Through it I had many visions of other worlds, other beings. I was rather disappointed with it all. I was entrusted with some devastating priceless secrets, which turned out to be the Hebrew alphabets and the magical names of planets and the days of the week, along with a little Kabbalah. I had known all this already. Any schoolboy could memorise in 24 hours what they talked in that lecture. We had a little trouble with one of our members. He had such a big ego, he was determined to take over. He actually stormed the vault. He squatted it. We had to call the police. Abracadabra. Do what they will should be the whole of the law. Do what they will should be the whole of the law. Do what they will should be the whole of the law. Do what they will should be the whole of the law. Do what they will should be the whole of the law. Out! Out! I always quite liked the chap. He worked well with magic. I initiated him up the ranks myself. He was thrown out of the order. Ordinary morality is only for ordinary people. Act passionately, think rationally, be thyself. 
The Golden Dawn had many members from all walks of life. They ranged from actors to writers, all wanting to dabble in the supernatural. I started my own order, the Audio Templi Orientis. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.